Eggy Spaghetti in the Spaghetti Lab and today's video is going to kick off a series where I'm going to show you how to get started with building your own audio installations. Now the inspiration for this video is a Canadian artist named Janet Cardiff and she works with her husband George Burez Miller and that forms the studio Cardiff Miller and they actually live in Berlin, Germany at the time. Now if you're, you've ever seen her exhibit at the Art Gallery of Ontario you might be familiar. She has a famous piece called Motet for 40 Voices and it's a large speaker array where they're all in a circle and there's a choir piece playing from it and it's separated in different ways and you can walk around the space and explore this sound piece in a way that we're not really used to since a lot of us listen to music in just two speakers as a stereo either with the headphones or just a normal stereo system so to have a, a 40 speakers with all these sounds coming out of it is, is quite unique and this piece is so well known that it's actually permanently installed in the National Gallery in Ottawa as well as there's a permanent installation in the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. So for this video we're going to take a look at how we would maybe begin a project like this. I have here with me a Focusrite interface and this one actually only has four audio outputs but it's enough to to work with for this kind of to get started with this kind of project as well if you didn't have an audio interface like this and you just were using your headphone output on your computer using a cable like this which takes the headphone out and splits it to two quarter inch or RCA cables that's definitely enough to get the hang of what we're doing and I should also highlight that the project that with Janet Cardiff's the motet for 40 voices it highlights why we would want to program our own sound player in a program like pure data and the reason I bring this up is because if I wanted to if I asked you to just play me an audio file off the computer you could easily just load up iTunes or Winamp something like that and hit play but in an art gallery installation there's a lot more moving parts for example which speaker is which sound going to how do we turn off the sound after it plays a certain number of times and also programming the computer so that it will start up and just play this piece so these are all considerations that we have when we start to build out this project. Okay, so let's do the first part of it and show you how to just play the audio files in Pure Data. Okay, so I've loaded PD Extended and I've also made a new patch called Choir.PD. I'm going to quickly take a look at the audio settings. So at the moment, I have it set to built in output, but it'll be switched to the scarlet and the channel number will go up to four for the output. And let's get out of here. And also note that the DSP is off at the moment. That's just the way the program loads. And we're going to start by making our patch. So read. SF is the object we're going to use that plays back an audio file and it does it's very basic it doesn't do much more than play it back and let us repeat the audio file and that's plenty enough for our needs the DAC as we talked about in the last video plays back sound out of the speakers and we're going to use this DAC object to create four sound outputs and these will be the, the different outputs on the audio interface and I'm now going to show you how we 
open up an audio file we we that was incorrect I create a message which is command 2 before I was creating objects and the message says open dollar sign 1 and dollar sign 1 means whatever came above it in the input and I now make an open panel object and I put a bang which is a button and bangs are very they're very common in PD as as input as a button and also output let's um, connect the open to read SF and what let's click the the so I can put it in take it out of edit mode and hit that bang so now I'm going to find my sound file and it's choir one but that's not enough to play the sound file I have to connect that to the DAC and also my I also have to connect the message that says start so let's now let's turn on our DSP and it actually um, exported the click from GarageBand. So there was my choir. Let's, so it, it won't even do it again until I hit the open sequence and specifically that file and start. So that's not entirely useful if I needed to repeat the file and how is that going to be repeated just so you know when the file ends it outputs this bang message so let's try it again start and there was that bang which we can use to trigger it again and again and again so we've just figured out that using the open panel was convenient to find the file but not convenient for our needs so we will do open choir one dot wave comma one I'm going to get rid of start and let's see what happens great and now let's take the output of this bang and put, throw it back into here perfect and a message of zero to stop it Okay, so that was a good start for getting the sound files to load and play. But what if we wanted to say have one of the sound files stop after it plays seven times and another one stop after it plays maybe 12 times. We're going to have to start to do a bit more programming to make that happen. And we'll do that in the next video. Okay, see you then.